Hi everybody, Kat here. Thanks for joining me today. Today on some cotton paper, I'm going to be doing some nice loose florals. And some people uh, in the in the uh, art groups that I join, um, they often talk about how they just they find doing loose. They always want to learn how to do loose. Um, and so I thought that I would do just a quick floral and show you how you can use the full range of your brush. Now these brushes, this is a silver black velvet, but even if you're using, I'm going to show you my very cheapest brush. So even this, this is dirt cheap. It is made for whatever it's dirt cheap. It comes to a nice point, has a nice fat belly on it. And so if you push, if we learn to push, often what we do when we're painting is we do these tiny little little strokes like this and we end up making a streaky mess. So I think part of the secret to having a nice loose painting is to just put your stroke down once and don't 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 play with it afterwards. So let's give that a try. I have two pots of water because I'm using Quinn Rose. I'm using Alizarin Crimson. This is a combination of Nickel Azo Yellow and Cobalt Blue Hue. And so is this, but this one has more yellow and a tiny bit of the Quinn Rose. And this one has less yellow and a tiny bit of the Alizarin Crimson. It's kind of cooler looking as you can see. Now I might not use very much of that, but I just want to let you know what I have. This is my size 12 silver black velvet. So that, I'm going to get that nice and wet. I'm going to leave it in the water. And this one is just a very thin, um, uh, what do you call that? A, um, a script liner. I'm going to use that to do some nice thin stems just so that I don't have to use that large. I can use this, this, this point, but I really want a thin point to start my painting with. So you might want to, that's a little trick. Start your painting off with something tiny. So you can see this is pretty watery. If I jiggle it around, it moves very easily in my dish. So I'm getting that nice and wet right up to the ferrule, dabbing it off. And I'm going to make a nice curved stem, barely touching the paper. I think I'm going to make another one here. And I'll make one right, right around here coming in this way. I'm going to my large brush. And I want to show you what kind of line I could get with my large brush as well. I'll show you on this paper. I just don't want to do it for for this painting in case it goes too thick. But if you put your hand up at a 90 degree angle and you just tickle the paper, you can get pretty thin. But I know myself and I can't keep my hand steady. And so sometimes if I go fast, I get a nice thin one. You know, I just didn't want this thick. So that's why I'm doing it with my script liner. So now I'm getting a nice juicy load on my brush. I think I'm going to add a little bit more water. So I put the paint on and then I popped the tip of my brush into the water. I'm going to add some and I'm going to come over here and I'm going to do a nice leaf right around here. So I'm going to tickle it. Come up, just push that down and come up. I'm going to do it again on this side. I, I have better luck on this side. So I'm going to just make a tiny stem, push that down, push it, push it, push it, and come back up. I'm going to come over here. I recommend you turn your paper to do this. You don't want them all in the same direction. So I'm going to take this one and this leaf is going to come across the stem. Whoops. There we go. I'm going to put one here. One 
here. Maybe a little bud. And don't worry if you don't have a stem to match. We'll, we can put them in later. I need a bit more paint. I didn't mix enough. Try to mix enough because it's hard to get the exact, exact shade you had before. A tiny bit of this. And that will have to do. And this one, I'll put the petal here. Whoops. And I'll put one this way. And I think I might do a little one going over this way. Now, with the same brush, I'm going to drop in some of this dark. Now these have dried a little bit, so I might be a little late. I'm putting it at the base where the stem would be. Yeah, so this one, I'm going to show you what to do with this one. It's still damp. It's not dry, but it's dry enough that this dark won't move. So I'm coming in with a bit more color and I'm just going to mit more of the original color and I'm just going to tickle that away. I'm not too too worried because this is loose and which means not a ton of of um, realistic detail. And there I think that will do the trick. Okay now while I think of it this one's missing a stem, this one's missing a stem, so I'm going to take my script liner again and make sure you don't have a bead on it. Come down here and this one. That way. And you can always add another one, but don't forget we need to have room for our flowers. Now with this same brush, clean it in your yellowy water and then go into your clean and really, really rinse that off. Because if you don't, your flowers will be brownie. So I'm going to start with a nice watery, bit more water, Quinn Rose. And I think I'm going to add a nice flower right here. So I'm, again, I'm squishing my, my brush. So I'm just allowing the brush to make its own shapes and then I'm going to rinse it off really well. Dab it so it's still, this holds a ton of water and I'm going to come in towards my edges and this will soften them. If you don't like something, have your trusty tissue around. Dab it off, re-wet, and add a bit more pigment and let's see where it takes you. I often have a bit of trouble on the videos near the edge of the paper because I try not to move my paper because my setting, I have my everything set up for it. While it's wet, I'm going to take a bit of that alizarin crimson and I'm just going to drop it in and let it just soften out on its own. And we'll see where that takes us later. I'm going to have to add more Quinn Rose here. Just know if you're using a large brush that it uses a lot more pigment than a small brush does because it sops it up like a mop. Now I think I'm going to put one right here and I don't mind if I caught it fast enough if it bleeds not quite watery enough if it bleeds into the leaf above. I quite like that. Let's see what we can do here. There we go. I'm going to do another one right around here. I think I'm going to put it up here. So I'm going to be working a little bit backwards. So be mindful of that yourself. Okay, just dabbing the brush off and I'm going to soften those edges here. This 
So this will soften out. And if it doesn't, don't worry because once it's dry, we're going to go in and make a few changes and add a few details, just a few though. And right here, I think this is going to be a little, nice little house for a, a tiny little flower. I remind myself to use the belly to release and the tip to distribute. And maybe I'll put a bud here. So just like that. I'm going to go in with this tiny little brush this time to put in a bit of, of the alizarin crimson. This is just to, to vary the, the colors that you see. It's always a little bit more interesting when you have some colors that you weren't expecting. You can even add it into your leaves here. Let's see what happens. I just chose this out over this because it's a bit more watery. While this is wet, I'm going to add the stem. This one too. Now don't forget these stems are very thin and we can thicken them up later. I can actually do that now if I want. while we're waiting for the rest to dry. And add a bit of dark, add a bit of dark under here. So I find often when we're using large brushes, we don't push down. So what we do, again, I'll show you on this back one. So often what we do is when we're trying to do a leaf, we, we do this, we do this, and we're, you know, we're, we're trying to fill it in like this. And we just end up making this shape we weren't looking for. It's not very, this is a more, much more natural looking organic shape. If you use the whole brush and then come up. You can twist your fingers or you can jiggle it and lift and all those little little pieces unfinished if they end up making your leaf look very natural. So try to practice using the full range of your brush. So from the tiny tip to the fat belly. If you want, you can add some splashes while it's still wet. That might be kind of fun. And now we're going to let it dry and I recommend letting it dry naturally. I know I will not be because of the video. Because sometimes it takes time to get these beautiful effects. So I'm back from drying it and I want you to notice one big reason why it's a lot better to allow your painting to dry by itself and that is because it kind of like a it's like a freeze frame it's like so while the while the watercolor is doing its thing you you stop it suddenly and so you get this is a pretty harsh uh, edge a cauliflower and I noticed that these ones are a little bit harsh but that's okay because I like it and if you don't like it I'm going to show you how to fix it uh, that's one thing I really like to do on my channel is I know how polished some of these videos are. I know firsthand that um, people paint over and over and over again and it's wonderful. They produce beautiful things but what it does is sometimes discourage the viewer. You think you can't do it and you really can. They've just practiced a lot more. So I want to show you what things look like sometimes before they're polished and how you can make your little boo-boos look better. So because this is a large brush, I'm going to take a, a slightly smaller brush to do the fixing. So it's in the same family, It's the, but this is, I believe this is a size 
eight. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at these these harsh lines. So of course you always wet a watercolor brush before you do anything. I'm going to dab it off and I'm just going to see what I can work on very gently with this soft brush. I don't want to go in with a scrubber. I just want to see what I can do with it before adding or any more paint. So all I did was play around with the edges and it's gone. It looks pretty good. This one, it's not a hard, it's not a hard uh, cauliflower line, but I'm not fond of what happened to it. So again, I'm wetting my brush and I'm dampening it off. So you can see on my hand, it's still wet. And I'm just going to wet that whole area. And I'm going to try to coax those colors to come forward up into the rest of the leaf. Because I, I still want those colors there. So I don't really want to remove anything. I just want them to blend out a bit. So we'll let that dry and see how that works. That looks a lot better to me. The only other thing that I see is... Now I've lost it. This is a little bit... Hmm. I, I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play with that one. So I'm just going to put some a little bit of water, wet, dry. I'm just going to wet it a little bit. I'm going to see if I can coax that edge to be a little bit less har harsh. Okay, so now for the rest of the painting. If you like your painting the way it is, don't change a thing. If you want to add a little bit of detail, this is when you would do that. So for example, if you want this to look like there's multiple petals, you can sort of define them, but really, really, really gently because you don't want to lose the looseness that you work so hard to get. So I see a natural separation right here. So I'm just going to add a little bit of that, that, um, Quinn rolls, rinse my brush and kind of soften the line like that. So there's just a slight, a slight delineation here. I'm just going to add a bit of Quinn rose into here. Just a little bit there. Another slight delineation. You can add a little bit there. Make sure everything gets softened out. Because on a loose painting, you don't want too much detail. You just want to give people the idea that this is a flower. And I'm going to put a little bit right there. And it really makes all the difference. So this can be a hit or miss. It depends on your vision, but I see two defined petals right there. So I'm going to decide that this one is underneath this one. So I'm just going to make a little bit. I'm going in zigzaggy and gently, very gently. And then I'm going to soften that out. I had a bit too much water on my brush, so I'm mopping that up. There we go. And now, just like that, you can see, you can better see that there are two petals. This one, I don't have a vision for yet. It's coming, but I don't want to touch it yet because that's the biggest one and I don't want to, to. Now you see how the red, it didn't really flow too much. So I'm going to be adding more Quinn to this later, but I need to dis to def to decide whether or not I want this to be three petals. Like I'm kind of seeing something here and then one in the back. So I'll, I'll, I'll think about it a bit more. No, I'll do it now. Just do it. Okay. Wetting my brush, picking up some Quinn. You see, you see, it's pretty watery. 
And as long as you stay kind of watery, even if you do something you end up not liking so much, you can usually change it. So I'm going to, even with staining colors, they are, it is harder. So I'm just use the full range of your brush. Use that belly to allow some water to release some water and then soften that. Okay. There's one there. And, oh, I wish I could talk to you in person. Somebody could tell me if they see something. <laughs> Soften that a bit more. So I kind of see something here. So before I decide though, I'm gonna come down here and uh, add a bit of Quin Rose there. Make sure it's nice and watery to start. I'll add some down here. might help me to see the rest of it a bit better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I'll do that right there. And soften that. This one I'm going to use the red in mixed in with it because it's a little bit dark and um, I'm trying not to duplicate too much. I'm trying to watch what I'm doing so that nothing ends up the same, but some of these shapes sort of tell you where to put, put the, um, the shadow, well, the shadows, the definition lines, the defining lines. So there we go. This one, I'll just add a bit of Quinn. I find it a little bit, um, I don't know what, looks like a bit of a blob, but that's okay. I'll scrub at the edge and soften it out a little bit. It's hard to scrub uh, reds. Most reds are, are staining. This here, I want it to look like a bud. So I want a bit of green here. So I'm using the tip of the brush to do that. And a bit of this, that's not the same green I used in the painting. That's the the green I used to show you something. <laughs> so it's a little bit off, but that's okay. So it will kind of naturally bleed up into this petal. And you can do the same thing with your leaves if you like. If you find, I'm going to add a bit of red. Whoops, a bit too much. So you can also add a little bit of movement to your to your leaves like that. You can add the darks at the bottom. You can add them, you can put one here, you know, at a curl. It doesn't matter. You, you, you can put them wherever you like. Drop it in and with another damp brush, soften them out. Put some here. Soften, soften. And you can always add a bit of these pinks to your stems. I always find there's a bit more harmony if you add the color of the flower into your stems and, and or your leaves. It's, it's up to you, you can do both. But do it when it's dry because that way the color will sit on top of the other color and look a little less brown. Because as we said before, reds and greens cancel each other out. So they make a neutral color or a brown or a gray. I think I'm gonna call that done. I have some splashes here, so maybe I will add some splash to it because I did that by accident. I had a, I had some dirty water I spl splashed on, and I also had a dirty thumb, so I made a bit of a bit of a mess. But that is the nice loose watercolor flower that is so simple. You can you can do this. So be patient, be kind to yourself, 
and happy watercoloring, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>